This red lantern can give you a lot of information about this ship, what they were doing and where their next heading is. This allowed me to be one step ahead of the enemy and get to their island before their arrival. This is because a red lantern means they are in chapter 4 of Athena's Run of Thieves Haven, assuming they're Athena's emissary flag. A long forgotten legendary voyage that you can acquire from Lorena, which also requires you to have a red lantern in chapter 4. If you have yet to hear of it, this is how you unlock this beautiful costume, the legendary treasure seeker. It's one of my favorites. From the legendary hideout of the commendation, ruling with legends at Thieves Haven. Understanding the basics is crucial to begin your pirate journey, but not going beyond that is also essential to ensure you fail and sink. Beyond the basics does not mean advanced either. It's that hidden path you can easily overlook and become advanced without even noticing what you have missed. And I'll show you 15 secrets of Sea of Thieves. And a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Fuzzy here, sit back, relax and enjoy. This pirate is not wearing shoes even though it looks like it. This is because shoes in Sea of Thieves make a sound when you run, and if you have a peg leg, it also makes a sound for that side, which makes your sneaks louder and more evident if you want to hide on an enemy's ship. Sea of Thieves pirate sound effects are related to the original outfit and not whole customs, so if you want to be silent, do not wear shoes. But if you still wish to have shoes on to hide your feet, a full custom can cover that without affecting the outcome. Also, as you know, some costumes come with emotes. The new curses also come with emotes, so if you're wearing an outfit with emotes while having your curse on, you will have a new opportunity in your radial that says custom emotes or curse emotes. So if you have both equipped, you can still access all your costume emotes. Then sit on the pirate lord's throne as a skeleton ghost, breaking all logic and lore in Sea of Thieves. On another note for skeletons, once their skeleton ship attacks you, primarily if it's the fleet, you can solo it by parking next to a rock, affecting their ability to attack you, as they cannot reach a complete stop after aggroing your ship. They don't have the ability to do that. Or perhaps, then you can send your crewmate, if you had one, to camp the jail area in the back of the galleon. Unlike a player ship where you can shoot through the grate or bars, skeletons cannot attack through bars, it's like an invisible wall, and if they do, it blocks all bullets. With that, only one hole in the back of the skeleton galleon is required while you prevent them from repairing it. Just make sure you have food at hand to survive underwater. All skeleton crews also cannot bail. This is one of the reasons you never see golden skeletons on a skeleton ship. Since they weaken when exposed to water, they slow down and start cracking, requiring only one bullet to kill them. You can also slash them with buckets to make them rust if there is no water where they stand. Opposing the plant skeletons that heal from water, you can notice this by the green particle floating around them. This is why if the bottom deck of a skeleton ship is submerged, it might take a bit longer to kill the plant skeletons than a normal bone skeleton. And if you meet them at a fort, keep them in dry areas. But we also should remember shadow skeletons, invincible at night, even from fire bombs. Even though a lantern can make them exposed, a flare from your ship on top of the skeleton ships or the sky of the fort will expose all of them for enough time to kill them. It doesn't matter what flare color or lantern light to use to expose them. That only matters in places like Fort of the Damned, where shadow skeletons are of different colors. With six of the flames of fate, you can light each one of them accordingly. Similar to the red lantern that gave away their destination in chapter 4 of Athena's run of Thieves Haven. In chapter 2, you'll also need the green one, and you can get all lantern colors except the pink one from the treasuries, depending on the way you die. Green from a normal attack of ocean crawlers or skeletons, blue from dying to a siren or shark, red from fire that can be easily used with a firebomb, keg explosion or sitting on a campfire, purple from the poison of hermit crab, and white from the electric shock you receive if the electric or his orb were attacked while it's active. The last one is pink, which can only be acquired by dying to an enemy player. Speaking of enemies, you can spot what emissary flag they have on the ship from a distance before its colors even render by looking at its silhouette and outline. Like the gold hoarder with three spikes, order of souls, a rounded end, Athena's fortune, one middle spike, reaper's triangle with sharp corners and merchant, similar to reaper but with all rounded corners. And regarding merchants, you can have a much easier experience with these details. Like cargo run initials, for example, you can't memorize if Tim is at the weapon shop 
tool shop or accessories. The first initial of their name represents the type of shop they are at. For example, Tim is for tools, Tanya is for tavern, Wanda is for weapons, and Shelly is for shipwright. Even though you don't deliver cargo to shipwrights, all NPC names represent what they do to make it easier for you to find them. On the subject of finding, you can also find which direction you are receiving damage from by noticing the larger spike in the red border. And as you know, Sea of Thieves has no headshots. Hitting someone's toe is equivalent to any other part of their body. Keeping in mind that pirate size doesn't even change the hitbox. It makes them easier to spot from a distance leading to higher accuracy. And since Rare added the pirate changing appearance portion in the Emporium, everyone went on a strict diet. But speaking of headshots, only one enemy in Sea of Thieves can receive headshots. And that is the Kraken. The head of its tentacles always make the tentacle escape when hit with a cannonball. If they are around you, hit the head and it's gone. Including when it wraps around your ship. Do not aim for the middle part with a sword as I see a lot of people trying to do that. It gets you poisoned and it takes really long. Instead, aim for the head. One cannonball does the job. And don't forget that right clicking while on a cannon gives you the ability to zoom. Just like the treasure map, holding down interaction buttons zooms into the map. But remember, cursed cannonballs also have no effect on the Kraken or Megalodon, but you can still farm them for PvP from random barrels on islands. But in better locations, skeleton ships, where you can identify the type of cursed cannonball they carry from the banner that they have on the ship, then take it from the skeleton from the cannon before they launch it. And most importantly, almost every cannon robot has at least a cursed cannonball and some chain shots. So if you see one while sailing by, even if you don't need the robot, a quick drive-by helps keep you stacked and a step ahead of the enemy. I wish I could keep talking more about secrets, but we don't want a half an hour video. Neither do you. So if you're interested in more, please consider subscribing. It's been a pleasure talking to you.